Muslim. Um, Leo, I take it you, um, after all the talking about who's the actual underdog throughout the week with both sides, I think, um, having a go at that status. Um, now that Race to the bottom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now that you've seen their team, um, what's your what's your reaction to, to to the perceived strength of the team they've named? And then secondly, when there's one or two players you probably haven't had too much time to have a look at in terms of analysis, how does that make you feel sort of from a prep perspective? Um, okay, yeah, like, they're a pretty settled team though, aren't they, the Bulls? Like, they haven't changed drastically from what we would have expected, so... Um, yeah, like you know, you go on the website, like it's a big squad they have, isn't it? Like what over sixty players, um, you know, which is a lot more than what we would have. Um, and you know, Jake has added to the group over since last season. And you think, like in terms of a couple of marquee guys they have brought in, Billy, um, Larue, and Bill Calo, probably those two in particular, that you know definitely add a bit of that top end um, experience and quality. So um, yeah, I think. When you go through the course of the season, like it's a long season, isn't it? So there has to be a lot of management that goes on to ensure that you can be firing at this end of the season. Um, and yeah, listen, as I said, like Bulls have been able to navigate their way pretty well. So, you know, obviously they made some decisions around Champions Cup. Clearly, when you think back to the team, say that would have been set up to play against Northampton um, in the quarterfinals. Obviously, we played La Rochelle that weekend. Um, and Jay clearly has his eyes set on URC. So, um, you know, some of the guys that obviously are here today, as they're playing tomorrow, should I say, like didn't, didn't travel for that game as an example. So, um, yeah, like I think Jake has had a pretty clear intention as to what his focus is this year. So, we know that they've they've been waiting for this day, which is a semi final at home. So, it's going to be a great challenge for our guys. Our guys are, are know it's going to be a serious challenge. Um, you know, when you walk in the front door there and you turn left and you see the the history wall i love a good history wall so i do um and uh, listen as somebody personally who would have watched so much of you know particularly super rugby and we wouldn't have seen maybe as much as the curry cup from in our part of the world um but in terms of particularly super rugby and you know think of some of the great bulls teams and a lot of our guys would have grown up with that so um that's why it's an amazing challenge for us to be here um at this stage of competition, isn't it like a semi-final? Whereas, you know, like it was just we sort of would have dreamt of that. You know, if I wind the clock back twenty years, um, you know, so it's 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 fantastic to be here. Amazing, iconic stadium, and, um, serious challenge. We have. There's 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 been so much talk about uh, in in sort of recent weeks. There's there's so much talk about obviously. I think this being your first. Um, playoff game outside of, 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 of home and obviously the, un, un, you know, the unfortunate results in, in recent years, it almost kind of makes you guys sound like some kind of um, sort of mental case, but <laughs> what, I, what I want to ask is, is how, do you, how, how do you sort of um, try to manage that and just get on with, and just get on with, you know, just get on with the fact that you've got a game to win? Yeah, well, because if this is our what our sixth playoff game this season, so our sixth knockout game. So, what if we've got through a last sixteen quarterfinal, semi-final of the Champions Cup, um, the quarterfinal last week in this competition? You know, we lose a final. You know, it's unbelievably tight game to lose or a top top team, as we all know. Um, it's on the day. You know, if you wind back the clock, you know, obviously we haven't won a trophy this season or the previous two seasons, but you go back to the previous four seasons, we won five trophies in those four seasons. So. You know, again, it depends how far you want to go back. Um, and in you know, seasons prior to that, we had a couple of seasons where we didn't win anything. Seasons prior to that, we did win some trophies prior to that. So, again, it just depends on how long you want to extend out the timeline. Um, the reality is it's very, very competitive when you get to knockout games. So you need to make sure you get lots right on the day. Um, and that's always been our focus. So, you know, we got lots right in the Champions Cup final, but there were some things we didn't get right. And that's the, probably the learning for this group to make sure we're better now that we're in a playoff game again. So, you know, we've we've come through as I said the quarterfinal. You lose a you lose a final. There's the natural disappointment. We've made, made quite a few changes, which is the last game for us in the RDS, which is our home stadium. Um, before there's a redevelopment that's going to take place there, so we moved to the Aviva Stadium for a quarterfinal, which again provincial game 
Derby game against Ulster. Um, and obviously we've travelled here, which is a completely new, unique experience, but one that the group is excited by and has openly embraced the challenge. So, um, yeah, but it's on the day now, isn't it? So um, we'll see two good teams going at it. And there'll be lots of little subplots, you know, what's going to be like in terms of scrum battle, line out, drive battle, um, the contact area battle, the aerial battle, um, who's able to retain possession best, who's able to play in the right areas of the field, who's able to put pressure on some of the various different individuals from both teams. So, um, and that's the that's the game of rugby, isn't it? So like, there's, there's no, you know, you, you know we've, we've all these got preconceived ideas of what we think is going to happen, but then it's, well, we've got to be able to deal with what happens on the day and what unfolds. So, um, yeah, the guys have prepared well. You know, obviously it's a unique challenge when you're when you're traveling and all the rest, but it's been good for the group, I think, in terms of that time together. So um, we'll see what it looks like in terms of the actual performance. Um, but for us, listen, it's just embracing another challenge now. But where else would you rather be? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Where else would you rather be? It's great, isn't it? <laughs> where would you like to? You come over to us. <laughs> so we'll go empty with Carl, Archie, and Fincher with Steve. Jake's talked a lot about the traveling. You mentioned that finding tickets at Saturday night for 45 guys would like to South Africa, and you guys arrived here at Rips and Browns and Bikes, and that's a challenge that we've been putting up for quite a while now, and Jake's been adamant about that. The North African game we talked about was one of those things that we really struggled to get our guys there. We were lucky that there were some fights available. This form was uh, yeah, losing to, to the Irish Southern right? but how did you experience that, this traveling thing? Is it such an issue, or do you, do you not think it's, you, it's a bit of a storm in the teacup? Yeah, like it, it's it's okay, like isn't it? It's because there's the big thing is like in terms of time zones and the, and the jet lag, so there's none of that effect. So yeah, like is in well, particularly from the players' point of view, they've 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 travelled in decent seats, and some of the staff were a bit wedged in the back, but we're, we're, all, we're all right. Um, you know, like it's it's I, you know we've seen the alternative in terms of our league, like in terms of the development of the competition. So to have the four being South African franchises in the competition. Like, it's unbelievable um, for us. Um, and the interest in the game that's here. And it's, what, we're still very early days in terms of competition. But it's definitely worth, you know, the, you know, the what, the little bit of, some of the travel challenges. But it's worth the little bit of pain for what the actual reward is, which is, you know, for us to be in a venue like this, in a game of this magnitude or vice versa if any of the four South African teams are playing in a knockout game in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and I just think you'll see the competition grow and grow and grow. Um, you know, so, yes, I, I think it's fantastic. You know, and I, I don't, yeah, like it's not the easiest thing to do last minute, mm -hmm. but um, the alternative, it's, it's, it's a lot better than the alternative, I think, because in terms of the level of the competition, now, um, there's some unbelievable playoff games I think you've seen. And play 16 here? The crowd that we're expecting in the office, how do you expect to for that? Um, good question, yeah. Like, that, that's the thing. We're, we're in, a, in a, a way hostile environment and we just need to embrace that. So, um, yeah, that's, yeah, like, listen, I think we just get excited about that challenge. So, um, yeah, well, like, in terms of, you know, Champions Cup in particular, like, you, you know, you go away to, you know, particularly you think someone like a, some of the knockout games in France and what that's like. And, um, you're used to that type of hostile crowd and the pressure that that puts on teams and the lift it can give a home team. So, um, it's something that the experienced players have experienced plenty. The number of players obviously involved in the Six Nations games and you know similar big stadiums, packed out, you know hostile environments, etc. So, um, but again, that's just another layer. Again, go back to the experience. Like, where would you want to be? Like, is it, it's exactly it. We're playing away in semi final of a competition knockout with a team again, like the Bulls that they are, the history that they have in. Okay, competition, Super Rugby, and Curry Cup as well over the years. And, um, yeah, so there's a real sort of feeling of privilege for us to be here, you know. Um, and I suppose with that comes a lot of excitement, and you know, there's the anticipation, you know, a bit of the nervous energy that we have. And um, yeah, like we're respectful of the history that's here, but it's making sure that we go out and perform and do ourselves justice. And you know, all the people that supported us this year that are not here that tune in to watch us play, you know, you think. We've, as I said, this is our sixth knockout game of the season. So, you know, working back from last week, prior to that, we were lost the final in London where we had 
you know, 30 or 40,000 Mensa fans travel to London to watch that game. Um, you know, prior to that, we, we played Northampton in the semi final, where it was what 83,000 people mm-hmm. turned out to watch us in, in Dublin in Crow Park, which is again an iconic venue. We had a couple of games in the Aviva Stadium prior to that, so we've had unbelievable support all during the course of the season. So, a little bit more challenging for supporters to get here last minute. Um, but we, there was a couple of supporters we had there watching the captain's run there, so which was great to see them. Um, and we know that we have this fantastic support at home. And a lot of our players have come through the system where they've come through clubs and schools within the Leinster region. So um, you, know, you want to just see you guys perform now, do themselves justice and uh, make the people that support them all during the course of their the season, but over the course of their careers proud as well. So hopefully we'll see where they go. You are aware that the rules are, are going to allow the spectators tomorrow to bring in oranges and things and that kind of <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? For you, not a good thing. <laughs> well, if all both teams keep to their structures and play according to the plans and everything, it's going to be a tight game. What do you see as the single factor, if you can do that, that will determine who wins and who loses? Well, like, you know, for all its complexity, the game of rugby, like, it's a simple enough game as well. So, um, I think that's the contact area is probably the big thing, isn't it? So, which is the collision between the attackers and the defenders. So, whether whichever side of the ball that you're on. So, um, whoever wins some of those contacts, that contact point, and I think that'll go have a long way to win the game, obviously. But that's sort of the game over the, the course of time, isn't it? Um, yeah, but it's the contact point, you know. So, it's been clever around some of that as well. So, it's not necessarily you need to be direct run into people, but it's how good you are in terms of some of that collision part or that contact part um, between attack and defence. So again, we've got some good guys that have some good evasion skills and good footwork and um, making sure you use some, utilise some of those skills. But I think that's the big thing in the game, isn't it? Between who comes out on top and then between that contact area. And comparing your semi-final tomorrow and the one in the Champions Cup. <clears throat> As in Northampton, you mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, like Northampton, again, go back, you think how we sort of managed that period. If you think so we played La Rochelle in the quarterfinal the Champions Cup and then you know we leave to go to South Africa on the Wednesday with a probably younger group, really. Well, I thought we had, a, we had like plenty of experience within that group as well. So we were disappointed how we performed, uh, particularly in that Lions game with a younger probably group that played against the Stormers. So um, then we had Northampton the week after, so we were a bit sort of a little bit cold maybe going into that Northampton game. It was the feeling. Um, we started the game well, scored a couple of good tries, I thought. Um, Northampton came back towards the end, and I think you Northampton have shown, even with the, like winning the Premiership, the quality that they have in their team. So, um, different challenge because A, the style of team that Northampton are versus the Bulls, probably. Um, there's the conditions, you know. Again, our guys have been off. They've experienced plenty now, if you think, since that game. You know, and we played Ospreys post that game, rotated some of the group, played the final, you know, rotated some of the group, played the quarter final, so we're back at it again. So, again, it's just another knockout game. But you need to get so much right in terms of these games because it's it's on the day and who's got the best prep during the course of the week, um, who's clearing the plan and who's able to really properly execute on the plans. Um, because again, it will still come back to some of those physical contact points during the course of the game. So I don't think we got a lot right in the Northampton game, uh, but it's again, it's just totally different type of challenge, isn't it, today? My final question is from my number. Uh, is it possible, in your view, that you can win the UFC and the Champions Cup in one year? <clears throat> is it possible? Definitely, yeah. So we would. <laughs> We were very close to win the Champions Cup, fellas. As I said at the time, it was a drop goal we had at the end. If we'd gone, what, two feet to the right, we'd be sitting here at a Champions Cup, winning. whatever, winning team, um, getting ready to play a semi final. Whether we'd win this game or not, I don't know. Would that make a difference? But we'll find out afterwards. But it's hard, isn't it? Like, it's fighting on two fronts is hard. Um, and that's why some of the decisions around you know, managing the group, because if you think we've come off the Six Nations and we're, what, 13 games in a row since then, uh, if you go to a final, it was 14 games. So that's probably slightly longer than what we would have had traditionally. Um, 
this last block of the season used to be only 10 weeks, whereas now it's 14 weeks. So if you think it used to be the June test, now it's the July test. So we it's unusual for us to play rugby, provincial rugby in June, because normally the season's finished at the end of May. So used to in, when we started playing Pro 12 and Pro 14 after that, it was the final would have been at the end of May. So it's not impossible because, you know, in 2018, we were able to do the double. Um, Granted, it was without the South African teams. Um, so we obviously have done it in the past, a double, um, with the travel and all that goes with it, which just makes it more challenging. Is it impossible? No, of course it's not impossible. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's bloody hard. Uh, but you can see with the teams, obviously some teams get knocked out of, say, Champions Cup, so they're able to rest up and fill up the fuel tanks, so to speak. Um, whereas other teams truck on. So obviously we've been trying to truck on every week. Um, and that's the challenge. That's what we're going to do. So it's hard. And that's why maybe some teams do what they do. But for us, we'd still be as ambitious as as always. Um, I try to go after a few competitions because they, we value them very, very strongly. So, um, and they're fantastic challenges to go after. Mm-hmm. Aren't they? Great challenges. Uh, good. I mean, how do you sort of um, keep the guys mentally in tune following the disappointment of the Champions um, Cup final and also again knowing that many of them will be involved um, against uh, South Africa, the Springboks in a few weeks' time? How do you sort of keep them in tune um, on this? Uh, well, they're a very ambitious group for, for starters. Um, and like we, t- we try to do our best in terms of the management of the group over the course of the season. And, you know, at some stages during the year, you give you guys young guys opportunities, which again is fantastic because again, you know, we're producing more often than not guys have come through the system. So you know, we're not really bringing a huge amount of guys from outside of Lencer. So, um, but over the course of the season, yeah, like we're trying to make sure guys are mentally fresh and they're able to fire and when it gets to the knockout games, you know, often back into disappointments. Um, you know, last year we lost the Champions Cup final and we had no game afterwards. So it's almost like we were we were relieved to be able to turn our attention to something quite quickly. Um, and there's always a little bit of this emotional sort of, you know, a bit of a roller coaster to a certain extent. Um, and that's something that we've, we've discussed. So I think you've seen, you know, a, a period where obviously the, the Connor game the week after we had to make some changes to get a bit of freshness into the group. Um, you saw some good parts of our performance last week, but there's lots of parts of our performance we need to try and improve on, and that's been the focus. So it's that sort of continuous improvement that the group are after. Um, so yeah, no, good challenge. Um, but this is because it's a new challenge completely. A lot of guys wouldn't have been here before. Um, it's something that they're excited about embracing and the time away together. And it's, it's, it's great, Like so we're excited by it, but we understand that it'll be bloody hard as well. Um, Sorry, I'm drawn to that last question. My mind was still thinking back to that because I watched obviously the Stormers um, La Rochelle game because we were waiting to see who would get on the plane to travel. Obviously, La Rochelle won at, won at the death, or well, as in the, the kick could have won the game at the very death. Um, and obviously, seeing the Stormers at the end, and that was John Dobson what he says. <laughs> the only saving grace is they don't play next week. So, uh, because remember, if they lost a good few guys to rear injury that day. Um, but that just shows you how hard it is, isn't it? Um, when you're up against some of the top teams. And, um, but that's the beauty. You know? We're still little old Ireland, so we are. Uh, you guys are the big boys. We're a very small rugby nation. We sit well behind in terms of game popularity. You think we have soccer, Gaelic football. Marcus is a Gaelic footballer, so he is. Um, Kilburn Croaks, very successful team in Dublin. Um, and hurling as well. So and that's the challenge for us. So. We're, we're trying to punch above our weight. I would definitely not repeat it in Dublin when I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, boys, thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Sorry, folks, we just moved them out of the way, if that's all right. Bringing the heavy hitters here. <laughs> uh, hey, Ken, Johnny, uh, can you hear us okay? Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, so um, from here on in, it's embargoed content. So. And um, so, yeah, I'll leave it to the floor, please, guys. Thank you.